Welcome to church tonight and I'm Johnny Boom and I'm coming to you from a cubby hole in my house. We actually have two or three little hidden places in our house if you've ever been to our house. They're funny little secret things. Anyway, I'm coming to you from here because I want to talk to you about what it is to be hidden in Christ. Not hidden from God. You can't hide from God. He knows everything about you. He knows every thought you have. He knows everything that's in your own heart, every intent you have. Now that can seem like a scary thing, like an exposed thing, but it's not. That's comforting to know that he sees everything that we are. But we are to be hidden in Christ, which means that he has us. He has us our protection. He has us in his heart. He has our relationship with him as such an internal thing that we are to be hidden in him. During this time when we are hidden away and you're in your homes, we're all in our homes, I want to encourage you to be hidden in him. I'm going to read from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 before we get into our cool service tonight with worship and, and the message. This is what it says. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. That's pretty relevant at the moment, isn't it? For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So as we go through tonight's message, I want to encourage you to open your heart even though you were hidden away in your house, there's still, you need to be hidden in Christ at this time. He's with you. He's around you. We just pray that the service touches your heart. Hey everyone, welcome to our home again tonight. Why don't you join us in worship? Stop it. 
in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness faithful you God, we just thank you for your faithfulness. In every moment, God, you are there, you are with us. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you continue to speak to us tonight. Let us hear your voice and hear what you have to say. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, we're going to pass it on to Pastor Andrew Dish tonight. So enjoy. Well, Paul Marie, Change Point, Fano, and welcome to Sunday Night Church. And um, so glad that you're here in my home. And uh, we're going to have a great night tonight. Um, and I, I want to start off with the title of my message, which is called But God. I'm going to say that again But God. And uh, I want to take us to the book of Genesis to look at the story of Joseph. Um, but before I do, I want to pray and invite uh, God to come into this, uh, this part of the service. Father God, I just, uh, I just pray. Pray that you come and uh, reveal more of who you are in our lives, reveal, reveal more of your truth. And uh, Lord, I pray that as we look into the life of Joseph, Lord God, you would reveal more of your son. Lord, that you would show us hope uh, and Lord, you you've, would show us more and prove to us more and more who you are. Uh, because God, we want to know you more. And uh, so Lord, I just pray you show up in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. The story of Joseph is probably one of my favorite stories in the Bible. But to be honest, it probably freaks me out the most as well. Uh, a few years ago, I had a prophetic word um, given to me, and it was basically prophesied over me that I would be like a Joseph. Uh, I've got to be honest, when I heard that, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if I could handle that. I don't know if I want that. Um, and the jury's still out on that one, to be honest. But what I do like about it is it combines the family dynamics it has youthful ambition, juicy plots, heroism, and reconciliation, all centered around God using one man, one man to save a nation. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Um, so if you're not familiar with the story of Joseph, if you've never uh, heard the full version or you've never read um, the book of Genesis and never actually studied um, the story of Joseph, I'm just going to bring some highlights, so just some quick little uh, keys to uh, the story of Joseph, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off at uh, Genesis chapter 41, verse 16. But let's kick it with uh, Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jacob. His grandfather was Isaac, and his great-grandfather was Abraham. So he came from a pretty cool lineage of fathers. And uh, he was uh, one of 12 brothers. 12 brothers. I mean, I had one. Anyway, I won't go there. But 12 brothers. He was one of 12, sorry. So he had 11 brothers. He had the special ability to interpret dreams. He had two dreams in which he saw 11 of his brothers bowing before him and he uh, made the unfortunate mistake of actually telling his brothers and so uh, they became quite jealous and angry and uh, well 
sold them into slavery. Uh, Joseph was purchased by a man named Potiphar, who was the head of the Egyptian palace guard. And God gave Joseph favor with him. And everything Joseph did um, was blessed. Everything he touched, uh, every task that uh, Potiphar gave him, he could see that Joseph was a blessed man. So he actually gave him authority over everything in his household. He, he put Joseph in charge. And, um, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife took a bit of a fencing to, uh, to Joseph and uh, tried to seduce him. Um, but good old Joe, he, uh, he stayed true and he ran away. He got out of there. And uh, so we, we look up to Joseph. He's the man. And, uh, but unfortunately, she, uh, she knocked on him and he got into trouble and got uh, thrown into prison. So uh, unfortunately, it's one of those cases where you do the right thing and yet you still get punished for it. Uh, but don't worry, God has a plan. So while in prison, God gave Joseph favor. And so in time, he became the head prisoner that helped look after all the other prisoners. So basically, anytime there was a new prisoner that came into the prison, um, they were given to Joseph and Joseph would show them around, make sure that they were okay, taught them how to do weights at the gym or shoot some hoops in the courtyard. Whatever that uh, Joseph um, did, he, God gave him favor. And uh, so even within the prison, he was given responsibility. He was, he was shown to be someone that was trustworthy and uh, someone to be, uh, you know, you could rely on. Um, Joseph interpreted the dreams for Pharaoh's baker and cupbearer. So I don't know what the cupbearer did or the baker did. Maybe they got in an argument or something, but Pharaoh just threw them into prison and uh, they both had a dream each and, uh, and they told Joseph the dreams and Joseph interpreted those dreams. And what had happened is that they, um, those dreams came to fruition and they actually happened. And uh, so, um, and Joseph said to them, hey, please, to the cupbearer, please don't, don't forget me. Um, well, he did. He did forget him. Um, but two years later, Pharaoh had a dream and no one in the land could interpret it. And then uh, the cupbearer remembered Joseph. Bing! Light bulb. Oh, hold on. Two years later. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's this guy that I met in prison. I mean, straight away, that loses credibility. You know what I mean? I met this guy in prison who knows how to interpret dreams. How crazy is that? Well, Pharaoh didn't really have any choice because no one else in the land could interpret them. And so he was like, well, hey, what have us I got to lose? Let's go fetch him. So they went and got Pharaoh, uh, they went and got uh, Joseph out of prison. And uh, this is where uh, we're going to pick up. So we're at Genesis chapter 41. I'm actually going to start with verse 14 and read to 15. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once. He was quickly brought from the prison, and after he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night, and no one here can tell me what it means. But I have heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. All right, so here's Joseph standing before Pharaoh in what I would like to call a life or death situation. See, if it was me, I'd be praying like crazy. I'd be like, God, I, I need you to give me an interpretation for Pharaoh. And then even if I give him this interpretation, God, I, I need him to like it. I need him to to actually like it, because if he doesn't like it, he, he could kill me, or he could put me back in prison. So this is not just a, oh yeah, I'm just gonna uh, see what I feel, and then hopefully I get it right, and then, oh well, if it doesn't work out, well, I guess I'll just go back to prison. No, no, this, this is life or death. And so Joseph is standing in front of Pharaoh, and he is like, man, like, this is serious. This is a big deal. And so that's what I would be thinking. And I, I imagine those kind of thoughts and those kind of feelings were actually running through Joseph's mind. But when I read on and I see how Joseph responds, and we're going to read that soon, 
I think Joseph thought, I think he was beyond that. He was above that. I, I think Joseph was ready. I think he had his game face on. I think he knew that this was his opportunity. This is what he was made for. And so we're going to read. And I, his, check out his response. Like, I just, I just love his response. It's so good. So Genesis chapter 41, then we're going on to 16, verse 16. And it says, it is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied. Time out. Let's just take, let's just stop right there. You don't go before Pharaoh standing in front of him and say to him, yeah, look, Pharaoh, I know you think I'm that guy, but I don't really have the power or the ability to do this. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> that is not what you say. In, in this world, and I'm sure when uh, Joseph was living back in that time, you didn't, you didn't just say, oh, hey, look, I'm not really that guy. Um, no, no, you would, you would put your hand up and be like, no, I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah, I can do that for you. Yeah, Pharaoh, I'll interpret that for you. Why? Because you were always trying to work your way up. You were always trying to climb the ladder. And you wanted, everybody wanted to be that guy or that woman or whatever you God's called you to be he he's saying hey I'm I'm it and you look at Joseph's response it is beyond my power to do this meaning within my capability who I am as a person I do not I cannot do this I can't just make this happen Pharaoh I can't just interpret your dream for you I think the real question is, who does Joseph fear most? Does he fear Pharaoh or does he fear God? So let's, let's go back to verse 16 because I cut it short. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied. But God, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied. But God can. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. But God. How many times are we confronted with a difficult situation and we turn to God and say, but God, but God, why? Or, but God, I don't understand. But God, you. Yet, look at all that Joseph had been through, all the betrayal, all the false accusations. He was imprisoned. He was enslaved. He was beaten. He was whipped. If there was anybody on earth who could question God and say, but God, it'd be Joseph. Instead, he says, but God can. But God can. In that moment of intense pressure, Joseph leaned into God, fully reliant, fully dependent, 100% fully in. He was saying, God, I'm your man. Use me, but I I can't do this in my own strength. God, I'm putting my hand up. I'll give 100%. I've I have my full faith and trust in you that, God, you're going to come through for me in this situation. But if not, I'm still all in. That was our Joseph. See, in that statement, Joseph proclaimed faith. That was a 
bold faith statement. He was saying God is the one who's going to come through. God is the one who's going to interpret that dream. We need to be as peop a people as bold as Joseph who proclaim the name of Jesus declaring, but God can. But God can provide. God can heal. God can save. God can deliver. God can. It's God who can. And because Joseph put God first, God, God demonstrated his power through him. And Joseph smashed it. Not only did he interpret the dream accurately, but God gave him the wisdom on what to do about the dream and how to set up a nation when they were about to go into seven years of harvest and plenty to only be followed by another seven years of famine. How did it took the wisdom of God to actually know what to do with that? And he gave that to to Joseph. So Joseph didn't just interpret the dream. He also knew what to do with the dream. And fortunately enough, Pharaoh, I imagine Pharaoh being used by God, he empowered Joseph. He made Joseph his 2IC, essentially his prime minister, the second most powerful person in the land from being sold into slavery from being absolutely working his way up in Potiphar's house to then be imprisoned wrongfully, then only to rise up the ranks within the prison, to go from the lowest of the low to going right to the top in a split second. I'll tell you what, but God can. God can. And God used one man to save a nation. And years later, he used one man to save the world. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If there's anyone who can do it, it's Jesus. He did everything for us. He did everything for his father. One man, one man, God can do it. God can do it. Look at it, all the situations in your life. Look at the situation that's going on in the world right now. In all honesty, if there's anyone who's going to get us through, it's God. And what changed for Joseph is it went from, but God can, to, but God did. But God did. And I know for in my own life that all the times that God can, and God did, I can now look back and I'm like, man, if he can do it back there, he can do it again. He can do it again. So my goal tonight is I want to give you hope. I want to give you peace. I want you to know that there is a God out there who loves you. He is so for you. And uh, he, he was so loved Joseph and he was so for Joseph. And there would have been times where Joseph may have felt like, what am I doing? What's going on? This is not what I thought was going to happen with my life. But God can come through for you. And when he does, then your language will change from can to he did. But God did. And so... I was also reminded with Joseph is that he never, he never took matters into his own hands. It's almost like he had this inbuilt trust in God from a young age. And so no matter what happened to him, he was faithful. He was steadfast. He never wavered in his faith. I'm sure he had times of doubt. I'm sure at times he felt very lonely. I'm sure at times he felt like his purpose wasn't being fulfilled. And yet even in every circumstance, he still found the ability to press on, to, to put his hand at work, and God gave him favor. And it's in times like this, that we continue to press on. We continue to not take matters into our own hands, but we trust that God is going to get us through, that, 
that God is the God who can. He's the, he's the God that did and he will always do. And so as a church, we need to believe. We need to continue to believe that our God is a good God and he's going to get us through. Amen. So I want to leave. I want to finish with this. I want to talk about Joseph and his brothers. See, after he became prime minister and they had seven years of, uh, of harvest, and uh, we're not just talking about how, like, they, it was cranking. Like, storehouses after storehouses were filled with grain. And uh, Joseph had this uncanny ability to know exactly what to do. Now, I think he probably got it from God. And so he, uh, he, he built all these storehouses, and as they were harvesting, he was putting away grain for the future. And, uh, but this, this famine didn't just affect Egypt. It also uh, affected the surrounding nations. And it affected also the land of Canaan. And that's where his, his, his brothers were. That's where his father were. And they were in the land of Canaan, which is known as Israel today. It's known as Israel today. But back then it was known as the land of Canaan. And uh, they were in famine as well. And they were running out of food. And they heard that there was this guy in Egypt who has oodles of food. And so they went down to Egypt and were like, hey, Prime Minister Joseph. Uh, I don't even think they knew who, who his name was. But they were like, look, we're running out of food. We'll pay you some money. And long story short, Joseph recognized his brothers straight away, but they didn't recognize him. So he played this game with them. And you got to read the story. Like, you you got to go into Genesis um, in, in the chapters of the 40s and just read about it. Because he, Joseph is clever. And you know the crazy thing? When he became prime minister, he was only 30. He was only 30 years old. I mean, he thought Jacinda was young. Man, Joseph, 30 years old to be running a country? I mean, he's got to have some serious wisdom. And so, God, he was totally giving him favor. And so... I'm going to, he, I just, I want to read this though. This is in Genesis chapter 45. And this is right when Joseph is about to uh, reveal his identity to, to his brothers. And it, it is just such a sweet piece of uh, scripture. And it, so it's uh, Genesis chapter 45. I'm going to read from verse 4 to 8. And it says, Please come closer, he said to him, when he said to his brothers, so they came closer and he, and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. Get this. This is what he says next. It was God who sent me here ahead of you. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years. And there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all of Egypt. God has a plan for you that is bigger and wider than you can even see for yourself. The key is to recognize, like Joseph did, that I do not have the power to save myself. I don't have the power to heal the sick. I don't have the power to save my family. I don't have the power to pull me out of the grave. But God can. May we be a people that believe that God makes all things good for those who love him. May we be a people that instead of complaining and holding a grudge towards others and towards God, we be more like Joseph, full of humility in faith and declare, but God can. 
I don't know what's going on in your life today, but if you're watching this and you know, you know that you have been striving to figure out how to fix the situation that you're in, just give it to God today. Maybe you feel like you're past your use-by date. You feel like your life is a mess. I'm here to tell you that God can. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart and you know that you need saving. God will save you. All you have to do is believe. Accept him into your heart and repent. Turn away from the things in your life that are that are not fruitful, that are, that are sinful, that are hateful. And say, God, I, I can't do this. I do not have the power. But God can. I know God, you do. And so if, if that is you tonight, I'm going to pray. And as I pray, I want you to invite him into your heart. If you even, if you know Jesus, invite him in and say, God, Take control of my life. Take the areas of my life that I'm striving, that I'm working so hard in. I can't do this in my own strength. Lord God, I need you. I need your power. I'm going to pray. Father God, right now, Lord, I, I just thank you for the life of Joseph, the example that he is to all of us. But the truth is, is that he's just a mere man. He's fallen. He's broken. He had limitations. He had weaknesses. He had, he, he had sin. And yet, God, you used him in a powerful way because he was, he was submitted to your will. He, was, he trusted you, Lord. He had his faith in you. So, God, I, I pray that for every person who is watching this, Lord God, Lord, we would put our faith in in you we would put our trust in you knowing that god you can you will and you do exactly what you say you're going to do lord i pray for every person who is in an incredibly difficult situation right now i pray that god as they put their faith in you lord they would see miracle after miracle after miracle that doors would open that jobs opportunities would come up lord that healing would happen in their body lord i pray that everything that they have within them lord would be lean themselves to you lord they would give it all to you tonight father because you're the god who can and lord i pray for those who are on a journey of discovering who you are lord i pray you'd reveal yourself to them in a powerful way that as they give their lives to you tonight lord that their lives would never be the same and that they would be able to look back from this decision this moment and go wow god you're real god you are good look at all the things you've done in my life lord i pray right now that the power of the holy spirit would just fill every person that is watching this tonight in jesus name Amen. Fantastic. I trust you were touched and encouraged tonight by the service. We just want to say that we love you. We are missing gathering with you all, but we will get back together. We know that. Have a fantastic week and join us next week. <laughs>